So we'll just open up SkyBrowse again, wait for the drone to be connected. So this is the workflow. You open up the SkyBrowse app, it gives you a nice little tutorial on what to do right there. And everything looks good. Distance and height seem to be updating. Yep. And so he just armed the motors. He's taking off right now. There is a red bar on the top middle part that says you have to be higher than 16 feet to fly SkyBrowse. And the reason is that we don't want to hit into any like tankers or tractor trailers or anything like that. Um, so this is designed purely for public safety. So now all I have to do is uh, fly directly above the scene that you want to map out. Uh, in this case, this is a car in Paul's yard. And if you tap the bottom right, you can also see a map view. And it's really cool because it shows you and if you zoom in a little, I'll show you the drone flight pattern. Uh, this changes based off of how high you are. So, Paul, if you were to just increase in altitude, you can see that the orbit pattern gets bigger. So this gives you a lot of confidence in making 3D models so that you know exactly what your drone's going to do uh, based on how high you fly. And also it shows you your drone's heading as well as its previous path uh, in yellow right there. So once you're above the scene, let's say about 40, 50 feet, uh, make sure you wanna clear all other objects like light poles, uh, power lines or anything like that and just scan around. And this is one of the benefits of SkyBrowse. You don't have to just estimate how high your drone flies and just put in say like 50 feet so you can actually scan it. So in this case, we are clear of power lines. On the top right, you also have a blue button if you tap it, it goes immediately downwards. It pitches the gimbal down to negative nine degrees. And if you tap it again, it pitches it to zero degrees. So this is really helpful for flying directly above whatever you want to map out. And it seems that all other obstacles are clear. So then let's get her done. Tap sky brows. And just like that, the drone just starts an autonomous mission with the uh, flight path as described on the bottom right hand corner. The drone's gathering all sorts of drone data. It is automatically calibrating its camera for the best results. It's recording video by itself and it's doing some autonomous flight patterns around the area. Now that we've cleared the power lines, we don't have to worry about them. They'll get a little close, but uh, nothing to worry about right there. And you can see that the drone is flying a perfect circle around that scene that you've flown, you've flown uh, directly above. On the left hand corner, you also have a stop button now. The sky browse button turned into a stop button. So in the case that you need to uh, emergency stop the drone, if you need to kill switch it for say a search and rescue mission, and this 3D model isn't as important, you can stop it. And what happens is it stops recording video. It freezes the drone at its current location and you have full control over the drone again. So everything's designed for peace of mind when you're making a 3D model. When the drone's flying by itself, you only have two buttons. Um, the record video button on the right hand side is actually purely cosmetic. We designed it so you don't accidentally click on record video. If you choose to manually record video, you still can with the RC. So if you want to say, uh, map something out underneath a structure, like an overpass or something like that, you can still manually fly your drone underneath it. Um, however, for the best results, we do recommend just tapping SkyBrows. And in about 90 seconds total, so in about five seconds from now, the drone will stop recording video. It'll pitch its gimbal upwards. You'll actually get a tactical vibration, which you can't see over Zoom, but it vibrates uh, telling you that the mission is complete. And this is designed so that if you're you know, at an accident scene and you, it's controlled chaos, you're not looking at the drone, you're not looking at the RC, you'll know that uh, the mission is complete. And once you're done with that, um, you just fly your drone back and you've made a 3D model. 90 seconds, one button press, designed just for public safety. So that's a sky brass right there. But we've also had a few questions. What about long range mapping? Well, we'll go over that as well. So once you've landed, your drone, you can just exit out. And Bobby. Hello. 
with the mention of long range mapping and the amount of time that took, do you want to try to just show wide browse quickly or? Yeah, we don't have to necessarily tap the wide browse button. What if we just like a screen share to show? Like, okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, so real quick, you just tap exits and go back to uh, wide browse. Once you're there, just gives you a quick tutorial. We can skip that and I will be your tutorial. So it shows you where you are, where your drone is and a highlighted area of what's going to be mapped out. So you can pinch the zoom, pinch out to zoom out. You have slider bars on the right hand side and the bottom side for precision tuning of your 3D map. So instead of having to set all these geo points, you just draw a box around the area just like that. Uh, there's also a previous flights button, which may put you at a different location. But uh, in the case you need to map the same place out over and over again, you can tap previous flights and it'll load your saved flight patterns there as well. And uh, it's the same exact uh, workflow. You just tap wide browse to enter into the camera view, fly your drone directly above the area. No need to uh, right now. But um, once you've flown, in this case, above 100 feet, you tap wide browse, it'll fly the mission. And that's about it. Uh, we also have side scan. Uh, on the top left by toggling that on. This is more for like tall buildings and like skyscrapers. It'll capture the sides of the buildings as well. And uh, if Paul, if you were to tap previous flights right now and then choose the top one, it will populate your previous flight that you chose. So this is really good for like mapping out the same place over and over again, be it a structure that you're monitoring over time, or um, say if you're looking at a River bank that may be flooding a lot, then you want the same exact flight, you'll get the same exact 3D model with that feature as well. So that's wide browse. That's the, uh, that's the gist of our platform. Really easy 3D modeling. There's not, there's not a lot of ex explanations necessary for it.